November 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapter 17 and 18 from the Old Testament. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, offer a riddle and tell a parable to the house of Israel. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. A great eagle with broad wings, long feathers, with full plumage, which was multi-hued, came to Lebanon and took the top of the cedar. He plucked off its topmost shoot. He brought it to a land of merchants and planted it in a city of traders. He took one of the seedlings of the land, placed it in a cultivated plot, a shoot by abundant water, like a willow he planted it. It sprouted and became a vine, spreading low to the ground. Its branches turning toward him, its roots were under itself. So it became a vine, it produced shoots and sent out branches. There was another great eagle with broad wings and thick plumage. Now this vine twisted its roots toward him and sent its branches toward him to be watered from the soil where it was planted. In a good field, by abundant waters, it was planted to grow branches, bear fruit, and become a beautiful vine. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Will it prosper? Will he not rip out its roots and cause its fruit to rot and wither? All its foliage will wither. No strong arm or large army will be needed to pull it out by its roots. Consider it is planted, but will it prosper? Will it not wither completely when the east wind blows on it? Will it not wither in the soil where it sprouted? Then the word of the Lord came to me. Say to the rebellious house of Israel, Don't you know what these things mean? Say, See here the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem, and took her king and her officials prisoner, and brought them to himself in Babylon. He took one from the royal family, made a treaty with him, and put him under oath. He then took the leaders of the land, so it would be a lowly kingdom, which could not rise on its own, but must keep its treaty with him in order to stand. But this one, from Israel's royal family, rebelled against the king of Babylon by sending his emissaries to Egypt to obtain horses and a large army. Will he prosper? Will the one doing these things escape? Can he break the covenant and escape? As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, surely in the city of the king who crowned him, whose oath he despised and whose covenant he broke, in the middle of Babylon he will die. Pharaoh with his great army and mighty horde will not help him in battle, when siege ramps are erected and siege walls are built to kill many people. He despised the oath by breaking the covenant. Take note, he gave his promise and did all these things. He will not escape. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, As surely as I live, I will certainly repay him for despising my oath and breaking my covenant. I will throw my net over him and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and judge him there because of the unfaithfulness he committed against me. All the choice men among his troops will die by the sword and the survivors will be scattered to every wind. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and plant it. I will pluck from the top one of its tender twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. I will plant it on a high mountain of Israel, and it will raise branches and produce fruit and become a beautiful cedar. Every bird will live under it. Every winged creature will live in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I am the Lord. I make the high tree low. I raise up the low tree. I make the green tree wither and I make the dry tree sprout. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by quoting this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers eat sour grapes and the children's teeth become numb? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will not quote this proverb in Israel any more. Indeed, all lives are mine. The life of the father as well as the life of the son is mine. The one who sins will die. Suppose a man is righteous. He practices what is just and right, does not eat pagan sacrifices on the mountains or pray to the idols of the house of Israel, 
does not defile his neighbor's wife, does not have sexual relations with a woman during her period, does not oppress anyone but gives the debtor back whatever was given in pledge, does not commit robbery but gives his bread to the hungry and clothes the naked, does not engage in usury or charge interest, but refrains from wrongdoing, promotes true justice between men, and follows my statutes and observes my regulations by carrying them out. That man is righteous. He will certainly live, declares the Sovereign Lord. Suppose such a man has a violent son who sheds blood and does any of these things mentioned previously, although the father did not do any of them. He eats pagan sacrifices on the mountains, defiles his neighbor's wife, oppresses the poor and the needy, commits robbery, does not give back what was given in pledge, prays to idols, performs abominable acts, engages in usury and charge interest. Will he live? He will not. Because he has done all these abominable deeds, he will certainly die. He will bear the responsibility for his own death. But suppose he in turn has a son who notices all the sins his father commits, considers them, and does not follow his father's example. He does not eat pagan sacrifices on the mountain, does not pray to the idols of the house of Israel, does not defile his neighbor's wife, does not oppress anyone or keep what has been given in pledge, does not commit robbery, gives his food to the hungry and clothes the naked, refrains from wrongdoing, does not engage in usury or charge interest, carries out my regulations and follows my statutes, he will not die for his father's iniquity. He will surely live. As for his father, because he practices extortion, robs his brother, and does what is not good among his people, he will die for his iniquity. Yet you say, why should the son not suffer for his father's iniquity? When the son does what is just and right and observes all my statutes and carries them out, he will surely live. The person who sins is the one who will die. A son will not suffer for his father's iniquity, and a father will not suffer for his son's iniquity. The righteous person will be judged according to his righteousness, and the wicked person according to his wickedness. But if the wicked person turns from all the sin he has committed, and observes all my statutes and does what is just and right, he will surely live. He will not die. None of the sins he has committed will be held against him because of the righteousness he has done. He will live. Do I actually delight in the death of the wicked, declares the Sovereign Lord? Do I not prefer that he turn from his wicked conduct and live? But if a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and practices wrongdoing according to all the abominable practices the wicked carry out, will he live? All his righteous acts will not be remembered. Because of the unfaithful acts he has done and the sin he has committed, he will die. Yet you say, the Lord's conduct is unjust. Here, O house of Israel, is my conduct unjust? Is it not your conduct that is unjust? When a righteous person turns back from his righteousness and practices wrongdoing, he will die for it. Because of the wrongdoing he has done, he will die. When a wicked person turns from the wickedness he has committed, and does what is just and right, he will preserve his life. Because he considered and turned from all the sins he had done, he will surely live. He will not die. Yet the house of Israel says the Lord's conduct is unjust. Is my conduct unjust, O house of Israel? Is it not your conduct that is unjust? Therefore I will judge each person according to his conduct, O house of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and turn from all your wickedness, then it will not be an obstacle leading to iniquity. Throw away all your sins you have committed and fashion yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, O house of Israel? For I take no delight in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. God, we don't do responsibility very well anymore. <laughs> Maybe we never did, but it just seems so clearly apparent that kids aren't doing well in school because of the teachers or because of cutbacks, that um, 
I don't go to church because the choir sings the wrong songs or it's too loud or I don't like the pastor or my favorite in my world. I'm not selling enough and it's eBay's fault or it's Amazon's fault because of all their changes. We just don't do responsibility very well. And in this particular uh, couple chapters of Ezekiel, he's definitely talking about personal responsibility, personal responsibility for what you do right and also for what you do wrong. You know, our relationship with, with you is a personal relationship. It is between you and I. There is nobody I can blame or fuss at or accuse of having anything to do with my relationship with you, good or bad. Um, it is between you and I. Now, there's amazing people you've sent into my life to help guide that relationship, and I'm very grateful for those people. You've also sent and allowed certain people to be in my life who are more on the wicked side, <laughs> and they have taught me a lot about my relationship with you. But I don't ever want to use the bad things that happen in my life as an excuse to not have this amazing relationship with you. And God, I'm so sad when I see people who do that. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, yesterday about a story that happened from my past. Uh, probably without question, one of the most devastating things that have happened to me where I was almost killed uh, by a person who wanted to murder me. And after I was done with the story and we were having this conversation about it, she said, well, what did you change in your life after you experienced that? And I said, nothing. <laughs> there wasn't anything I was going to do differently. I definitely wasn't going to live in fear because of this one person. And I said, plus I know God's in control. So if he wanted me to survive the situation, I would survive. If he wanted me to uh, be murdered that night, then it would be fine and that would be his will. Um, I can't change my life based upon these bad experiences because I have to take responsibility for my life. It doesn't mean I don't learn things in life, obviously, and I adjust things accordingly. But too often we allow things to do two things to us. One, we either don't take responsibility and try and shift the blame to somebody else as to why something happened. Or we're like that leaf, the leaves I'm watching now in the fall time, where they just flit around on the, uh, the wind that picks them up and just moves them anywhere. And we allow people and situations to do that without stopping and intentionally uh, being aware of our surroundings, being aware of the situation and, and allowing certain things in our life and not allowing certain things in our life of, of having boundaries in our life, which are so incredibly important. I think of a situation that has happened and been happening for the last couple of years of my life that I've had people say, why didn't that destroy you? That would destroy me. <laughs> and I don't think it would destroy them because we rely on your strength uh, for those situations. Um, but even though it was incredibly painful, one of the more painful times of my life, uh, obviously different story than the murder story, but incredibly painful times of my life, it also deepened our relationship which was one of the most amazing blessings to come out of something that technically was so bad. And it's because I didn't let that situation change me. Uh, I was, you know, I was very angry about that situation. Uh, I was angry at you for putting me in that situation uh, and allowing those things to happen. Uh, and of course, I took part of the responsibility. I was angry at myself for certain things I did as well. But the ultimate result of it is what I need to focus on and pay attention that out of something bad came something amazing, which was this deeper level of relationship with you. Um, I didn't let that relationship uh, change me in the sense of something bad. Um, I didn't let it flip me around on the wind. Um, I held true to my convictions of what I believed in throughout the whole thing. And I think... I think we all need to realize that, that if we have this basis, these building blocks, these cornerstones in our lives of this faith, that things can come and happen. Great big huge storms of this world can come and happen and that base won't shift. It won't change. It's not going to be like a lightweight leaf that gets picked up in a storm. And there will be nobody to blame or not blame that the cornerstone broke, shifted, whatever, because that faith is not going anywhere, that it is solid. God, I just pray that everybody get that, 
base underneath of them that they work on the relationship with you and take responsibility for that relationship with you that they do the work that they have that base so there's no shifting that happens in this in their lives that you know they listen to a sermon like oh my gosh that was a great sermon and then you know 15 minutes later they're off doing something that has nothing to do with anything that was just preached that morning have their life be solid uh, complete and so when these really bad situations happen in our life that we can take responsibility for them happening but we can also move forward with that powerful faith that's in us um, those cornerstones put there by you and take responsibility for our actions of coming out of it not blaming a shift in our relationship with you on something bad that has happened in our life God, I'm just so thankful for that base in my life that I can always go back to, that is steady, consistent, uh, continual. I never have to ever be concerned that it's going away. God, I know that that, that base is you uh, and that you have never left my side no matter what has happened in my life. And I know that you never will, which is just crazy awesome. And I truly thank you for that. In your son's name I pray. Amen.